Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A, emails number 48, where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I will most likely read them here. So let's get right to it. The first one is called Clouds NASA Live Feed Eclipse. Interesting title. Hello, Mark. My name is Mike. I live in the Charleston area. I was watching the eclipse on YouTube today on NASA. I noticed once that clouds went between the sun and eclipse object. I want to say moon, but I'm not 100% convinced that it's the catalyst. I saw a second time right before the totally got here to Charleston. I am reading this verbatim. Forgive me because the grammar is... Not great. Uh, the second time was very noticeable cloud. I'm guessing it's English is not his first language. So much so they switched from live to a shot of America till it was gone. In fact, they used the word America probably tips you off here. I did not have my screen cap on, but maybe you can find some footage of it so we can cut the heads off of this Hydra once and for all. And he has a couple quotes. Flat's a fact. Stay flat. Flat for life. Flat or die. And flat's flat. There are two things I know are flat, the earth and yo tires. <laughs> hey, I gotta get you to understand flat somehow. And in the words of conspiracy music guru, oh, NASA's faking everything that we have ever seen. And as for, for, as for flying to the moon, well, they ain't never been. Man, that's liberating. Thanks for your time, Mark. I hope this helps us in the battle. Godspeed, brother. And that's from Mike. Thank you, Mike. Great email. Uh, maybe great's not the perfect word for that. This one's called, Have You Guys Ever Heard of This Stuff? Hey, it was written to multiple people. Hey, Mark and Jaron and Paul. Huge follower of you all. I am a retired Navy aviation guy. Made this account to do my flat earth research. You are all much braver men than me. But for the past year, I have come out to a few people. But you all know how that goes. I'm a Christian and tired of the lies. I follow all of you as much as I can make time for. Keep up the fight, brothers. I ran across this tonight and never heard anyone talk about it before. Thought these maybe be a good topic for one of you to look into. And it's a link. And the link goes to a YouTube video called Flat Earth Physical Proof of the Firmament. Published August 19th of 2017. It's got, yeah, a couple hundred thousand views and it's by Richie from Boston awesome and you know what I'm gonna give it a thumbs up even before we're looking at it but I will check it out after uh, I'm done so awesome thank you uh, I, he says I would really love to get in touch with Rob Skiba but cannot find an email for him well that's because Rob keeps it pretty secret because he's a tough guy to get a hold of let's, let's face it he's got a ton of subscribers and a lot of listeners and uh, I can't even begin to give out his email here i'd very much like to be able to speak with cindy holland somehow as well i don't think i know her uh was hoping you could forward this to rob and cindy thanks for your help respectively ryan and he's an air crew survival equipment man first class aviation warfare united states navy retired i will see what i can do ryan thank you for that email this one's called flat earth Hi, Mark. My name is Marcin, M-A-R-C-I-N, and I'm from Poland, and currently I live in Britain. I have watched your video. I'm studying flat earth theory from a, from a few years now. I'm understanding more than other people around me. I have a question. Is there a community in the United States or Great Britain existing and people can meet and talk? Because everything around me is a big lie and people just love to live this lie. I got I got son five year old. Try to introduce him a flat Earth map and explain how it's those two models works and where they come from. You can share on advice how to deal with situation like blind people without even to try take a look on an evidence. Kind regards, Martin Polsky. And the reason why I slipped in that accent is because when you're actually dealing, when the words are laid out, like this is actually easier to talk and I'm not making fun. I actually like doing that accent, not because I'm Russian or Eastern Bloc, I'm just saying. Okay, next one. This one's called Eclipse Math Detailed. Mark, I have a degree in math. 
I'm a licensed FAA drone pilot and a flat earth believer. I also fly helicopters and planes. Oh, I'm sorry, remote control helicopters and planes. Would be happy to help in any way I can. It's hard for me to organize my thoughts on paper in a logical manner. So I'd, although I started writing this as questions, it evolved into a lot of math. Bottom line is the eclipse doesn't work on their ball model based on time of year and size of shadow. I hope you find this information useful. Please feel free to use it as you'd like. Check the math again, maybe, but I do not want any credit for this. Document is best viewed on a PC because of diagrams I have in the document. Thanks, Ken. Call any time. He left his phone number. I've also done some work on the Tislowski rocket equations to prove NASA lies. Awesome. Thank you. It's good. This one's called Flat Earth. Uh, let's see here. From Bruce Leibel, pronounced label, Flat Earther in Traverse City, Michigan. Pretty much grew up questioning everything. Started with both Kennedy assassinations, moon landings, John Lennon, Malcolm X, Martin Luther, Martin Luther King, up to the point of my wife and I sitting in our honeymoon suite in Paris, France, watching all three buildings being demolished, knew it immediately, on 9-11, that intensified my research dramatically. I can truly say that I now know what goes on behind the curtain in this world of ours and who is pulling the strings. I am raising, okay, the wife helps too, our two teenagers to know and understand the truth of our world. Then about a month ago, Flat Earth happened. All of those other topics seemed unimportant next to Flat Earth. Yet I am just starting to approach the subject with my kids. The other day, my 13-year-old son and I proved that the sun is not 93 million miles away by simply turning the light out and using a paper bag with holes in it and a flashlight. Blew his mind. Next, next we will go down to Lake Michigan with a telescope. My 15-year-old daughter and I will use the biblical method, diehard Catholic, and that should be rather easy, I pray. Oh, I see what he did there. That's funny. I have viewed many of your radio shows as well as other Flat Earther videos. Cannot wait to discuss this with my father, a former Air Force pilot. The one map comparison that really blew my mind was the weather patterns on a globe versus the AE map. Check that out when you have the opportunity. Thanks for doing what you do. Keep on trucking, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. This one, no, that was from the Sun and Moon group asking me if I was going to do their hangout, and I did. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hi, Mark. I'm new to this Flat Earth concept, and I'm sold on what I've heard and read, but my only question is that if Earth is flat, let's say like a coin, is it possible that what we think of a sub-Earth, a sub-Earth, is just the other side of the coin? Hmm, maybe. Didn't, didn't, hadn't really thought of it like that, but yes. Yeah, very possible. And that's from Domichel, D-O-M-E-C, I'm sorry, D-O-M-E-C-H-I-E. -E. I do not how to know how to pronounce that. Not going to even try. But the last name's Campbell. This one's called Eclipse. If I can open it. Mark, thought you might enjoy, might enjoy these. I get a, a star in one of my pictures. I took them. And it's on Google Drive, and it's a whole bunch of pictures about the from the eclipse. Yeah, they're very nice, very cool pictures. The eclipse. Thank you for that. That's from Paul. This one's called "I Have P900 Video of Star Next to Eclipse." Mark, let me know if you wanted. I was listening post record of this week's Strange New World. You mentioned not seeing stars. I was on a mountain in North Carolina. No chemtrails, very little population. Also have a strange sight of apparent sunset. I believe Dan Dimensions, Let There Be Light, is a good guess during totality. That's from Jack. Hey, Jack. Thank you for that. This one's called FE. A little bit longer. Greetings, Mark. I am just hearing about the Flat Earth Theory. I don't even know where to begin. begin. This is just a free-flow train of thought. I believe it. I just don't understand why they ran with it. There's a lot of questions marks in this, by the way. Why are we stuck in a snow globe? I'm surprised all this data even surfaces on YouTube and the internet if they really are trying to hide it. I believe it. I really do. The spherical drop-off was enough to sell me 72 hours ago. I just happened to cross it by chance and talk about a complete upheaval of life, the ultimate betrayal. School is really a waste of time in addition to my student loans. Funny, but not funny. I am writing today because you posted full documentary. Touched me the most. I suppose I am ready to confront further. We're living on a Petri dish. 
what does that even mean? If space isn't real as we know it, I think his brain's actually melting. We'll just keep going with this. So if space isn't real as we know it, then what is the other side of the dome? There is a YouTube video that poses interesting data on that too. Clearly, even the solar eclipse isn't even real. Saw that YouTube video too, although I still enjoy the uniting of the nation for 12 hours. What about all the supposed UFOs seen by tons of people? Are they sophisticated drones used by the life forms observing us? I really feel like I am. I just, I don't know what to do with this information. I keep finding myself staring off into the distances these days and just questioning everything. Why do earthquakes occur? occur? What parts are actually real? Is there any truth to our museums, the history of some cultures within the past 5,000 years? Are we all just being played like a Sims game from some higher life form. Why would they watch us suffer all the world hunger, diseases, etc.? What about supposedly sudden unexpected weather changes, sinkholes, tornadoes? Is this some sick Hunger Games type deal? Is there any truth to our world history at all? What is the point of our existence? Simply to create art and capture beauty to be humbled? What about the genius breeds or highly skilled individuals? Any truth to telepathy? Is our DNA just some massive high-technology version of tracker devices, similar to the Fitbit idea? And anatomically, what do our bodies need the manufactured sun? Or, I'm sorry, why do our bodies need the manufactured sun? Are we some huge homunculus, homunculus, homunculus experiment? What's next? Is global warming actually real? Melting the outside ring? Should we pollute further, trying to melt it all out? Or should we turn in turn kill ourselves too fast to be of any use. Does this explain some phenomena like the Bermuda Triangle? Some sort of pillar hidden there that if you happen to stumble upon its game over, a glitch of sorts in the system, are all these supposed crazy people not so crazy at all? Perhaps tapped into some frequency the rest of us aren't, and it simply proves to be too much for most. I find myself wanting to touch the Truman Show, but that might actually be incredibly depressing this time. Talk about tenfold empathy. I know mass panic wouldn't be good for anyone, but to be lied to from birth goes against every fiber of my being. I am simply in pure shock of that fact alone. I mean, I always felt like we were being lied to, but who the hell knew by how much? Thank you for Section 8. Why is the caption so far off on 3 Gandhi interview? Thanks for reading my free flow. And that's from Coco. Literally his name, that's how he signed it. K-O-K-O. -O. I mean, it could be just K-O-K-O. -O, I don't know. This one's called, Can You Explain This Pick For Me Quickly, Mark? Hey, Mark, I took some photos during the eclipse with my phone. Obviously, as you can see with the pick, you can't see the eclipse. Well, I live in Canada and I saw it at max 70% with the naked eye. I could see the eclipse at this time while taking the photos, but can you explain what looks like the moon underneath it? I can't seem to find anyone online who has this. Any ideas? Hmm. Don't know. I'm looking at the picture right now and it's got a tiny, tiny moon to the lower right hand side of it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that's a glare or. A partial image of the eclipse that's being refracted off of something. It's interesting. Uh, unfortunately, it's tiny. You sent it. It was you sent me the file. It's only fourteen point seven KB. I mean, it's a what a two hundred by two hundred picture. Um, if you're listening to this, send me a higher res one if you got it. This one's called "The Sun Is So Close." I could take it on a hot date <laughs> by Joshua, and he sends me a link, and that's actually the name of the video. "The Sun Is So Close." I could take it on a hot date. Uh, Flat Earth Awakening. That's by Joshua Stargaze. So you can look up that video if you want. Oh, actually, Patricia commented on that. I should say yes. And thank you. That's awesome. Delete. This one's called U.S. Army Communications Specialist Veteran Flat Earth. Mark, I want to take a moment to say thank you for not only getting the Flat Earth clues out there, but also having subject matter experts in fields that give us a real comparative analysis of our world in opposition of our proposed world by the mainstream. I'm a military veteran who served with a signal company on a high deployment base out of Texas and had the chance to the field, the f 
chance to field the first iteration of a new generation of communication packages by General Dynamics in 2003 prior to going to Iraq. Mainly, my job was to take a HMMWV shelter with several pieces of equipment such as network switches, patch panels, capabilities to provide high-speed data to several units and, of course, our antennas and radios, stripping away the whole... Comsec and SINGCARS activities. These are all big acronyms. We dealt with, I can speak to several instances during training in which one thing happened which had me puzzled for a few years. Simply put, a vehicle would drive with a team of soldiers about 25 to 35 miles away, set up shop, power up a generator, crank up the radio, connect the cable, and put up the antenna mast about 20, 30 feet. When, then they would orient the mast in an azimuth degrees to distant end who would flip-flop frequencies given and in reverse order point the antenna head back to them in a typical line of sight fashion upon the many communication links we successfully had in varying conditions the rate of reliability had me thinking about how two unassisted radio signals going from point a to point b were able to do this when the calculation puts 200 to 700 feet of earth between them the simple fact that we never calculated this or used bounce as we do with tropospheric communications led me to the fact that the line of sight upon repeating this over and over for years with almost perfect results is my one personal proof that this is only possible in a plane and not a planet i've dealt with criticism from very intelligent people and find it hard to conversate with anyone about this so it's great you're opening up ways to communicate this awakening to the masses. A childhood friend who is a PhD student from a prestigious university, after knowing him for 20 years, has literally stopped speaking to me after I asked him for a mathematical or scientific explanation on my line of sight question and never said the words flat earth. His last comment in blunt and obvious sarcasm was, and I quote, Okay, okay, the earth is flat. When I never even went that direction. Thanks for all you do, Chris. Very welcome, Chris. Thank you for that email. This one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. I'm a longtime listener. Are you by any chance in the East Coast Carolina area, or can you get there for an experiment? It is my idea of an experiment, but I need assistance, and I will pay one-third for the experiment costing about $5,000 total approximately. Can probably be done with less if you have the resources already. I can call you and talk if needed. Thanks in advance. Uh, no, I, I am not um, in the, that area. I am up in the Northwest, up in Seattle. So if somebody wants to get a hold of him in, in the Carolina area, his email is babdisa2016 at gmail.com. B-A-B, B-A-B-D-I-S-A 2016 at gmail.com. Thank you for that. This one's called YouTube. Mark, hey man, hope everything is awesome for you. Are you aware of YouTube unsubscribing people from your account? I know they did it to me. That's from Carl. Uh, no, I am not aware of that. I mean, a couple of people mentioned that they were unsubscribed to me, but for the most part, I don't criticize YouTube much because they haven't, they haven't hassled me. They haven't hassled me for my videos. And you remember, YouTube has gone through a lot of changes recently, very recently, this week, as a matter of fact, uh, the beginning of the adpocalypse. It's now in full effect, where if you have a video that is controversial in some way, and I mean, you know, sexually suggestive, it shows violent acts, uh, talks about suicide, anything along those lines, if it's, if it's negative in some way, or even criticizing the government, um, it won't be shut down. The video won't be shut down, but basically saying you can't monetize it. They, they put a yellow flag next to it and says that uh, the sponsors, the major sponsors, the, the cool ones, the big ones, you know, Chevy and Ford and Coca-Cola and Pepsi and, you know, big sponsors, they're not going to back the ad. You're not going to get your hit nickels for them. And I have not, you know, even when that whole wave has been going through this week out of the 800 plus videos I've got out there, I only had four that were yellow flagged and just... Two of them, I absolutely deserved it, and the other two I appealed, and one of them I already got overturned, so um, I can't hassle YouTube too much yet. Now, of course, if they come down on Flat Earth, well, that'll be another day, but we'll see. This one's called Astrology from South Africa. Mark, hi, thank you for all your excellent and great efforts you give to the world in re-educating it to Flat Earth. You've certainly helped me a lot, dot, 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 a lot. 
Could I ask you for your standpoint on astrology? I write to ask you for your expert input and opinions based on the extent of your sound logic, which I really am keen on to hear and would love to share with others. The reason I ask is Andy from OOWK media.com has loads of related material off the wall stuff videos and documentaries on his youtube site he has just finished a skype session with me uh, which he will upload hopefully this weekend a second session happening late next week on which i will be sharing my thoughts on inner earth i'm an astrologer and as i see it combining folklore different mythologies and logic these may many different sources tell me that astrology along with its various facets originates from inner earth the entire flat earth theory i deduce is continues to to be a masterminded by our ancestors gods if you will from down below a really neat mind job to call it hell excellent stay away tactics you've mentioned they're hiding god oh yeah he they is an inner earth bad english but i'm sure you get the point all 13 chief clans as outlined by astrology serve to make up the one 12 is a nice happy earth mathematical number but we know it's more like 13 oh there's that number again you might like to look into the complex mathematics tied up in knots the word not ever so conveniently falls under the subheading of topology and how convenient that this falls under the sim system of mathematics the world notha k-n-o-t-h-a is the old norse word for squeeze what's the chances this is exactly the same definition for magma our inner sun how how's this for fabulous tale the webster's new international dictionary describes the word topology as follows i've only put in the important stuff to stress the point topology uh, a the theory of continuous deformation b the theory of knots Continuous deformation, this sounds awfully similar to inner earth on the move, continuously. The Vedas describe the realm of the gods as everything being alive. Coincidence? I think not. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. What you Would you be keen to share your thoughts with me on astrology and inner earth? Obviously, the crisscross of information runs wide and deep. Looking forward very much to hearing from you. Discovery is always Holger Olsthusen from South Africa. And hopefully he's listening. Uh, hold your, I, I've said on many occasions that astrology uh, could be perfectly valid inside this system if you want it to be. I mean, uh, astrology is just a giant clock system used to predict events and concepts and ideas. Uh, the clock system is still very much intact if the world is enclosed. It's just much more intimate. It's your clock system. It's not anybody else's. As far as the inner earth, hollow earth, that's how I got into it. Uh, remember, m most of our population lives from sea level to one mile up. That's only about 5,000 feet. That's most of our civilization. So to have an inner earth, sure. But you don't have to have this giant cavernous spherical inner earth. You could have a, you know, we could be living inside an inner earth technically. Why not? If we live within a, really in a one mile band, what could you do if you had a hollow earth underneath us that was 50 miles high? You could put multiple civilizations in that and they'd never even know it. So I'm a believer of the inner earth. I don't think it conflicts with the flat earth at all. I just don't believe in the globe. As far as astrology goes, I'm not killing astrology. Astrology is alive and well. It's just that it's much more intimate. So thank you for that. This one's called Pics of the Eclipse from South Carolina. Hi, Mark. Didn't know if you got any pictures of the eclipse from the body next to the sun. DITRH had a great two-minute video that made a lot of sense. Here are some pictures I took myself. Definitely worth the trip. Lenny from Connecticut. Thank you. Awesome. Survival Guide, please. That's what this one's called. Hey, Mark. Survival Guide, please. Thanks tons, Gabriel. Yeah, if anyone wants a free survival guide that I wrote for just about any occasion, it's called Empty Shelves. It's absolutely free. All you have to do is email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and put in the title somewhere, I want their survival guide or survival guide now, damn it. Or whatever you want, just be clever. Just say survival guide in there and I will just email it to you. It's only two megs. It's about 100 pages long. The only thing I recommend is that you print it out if you get it because if you get the survival guide, you're reading and going, hey, I got a survival guide. And then the power goes out. It's like, damn it, I had a survival guide, but then now my phone's dying and I don't know how to read it. So yeah, print it out. Print out a hard copy. I printed out multiple hard copies and gave them to my family so they wouldn't have any excuse. That way I can do the whole I told you so dance when the zombies come. 
This one's code, you won't be disappointed, I promise. What's up, Mark? It's been a while. I wanted to reach out to you because I've independently discovered what causes the eclipse, and it's not the moon. It's hard to say something like that without proof, but fortunately, I've recorded evidence that supports my claim. Have you ever seen an eclipse at 35,000 feet? Most haven't, and it's a completely different view from ground level. At 35,000 feet, you get to see in high detail of what goes on in front of the sun. In fact, there are several of these objects. Don't believe me? Check it out for yourself. And that's from Lonnie, and he sends me a link to something I'm sure I've already watched, which is called the Rahu Ketu Eclipse. The moon is not the cause of solar eclipses. It's got 66,000 views. I already gave it a thumbs up. I already watched this one. It's good. Thank you for that. This one's called, I left you a message on your phone. Mark, so I asked about the seasons on a voicemail and bow, and bow I have another thought. Amelia Earhart, she was the first to fly all the way around the world in a closed loop, but she was never heard from again. Do you think she found something, or maybe discovered something and quite possibly was silenced? I don't know, but to me, a flat earther should really contemplate that. And yeah, the seasons, I'm not going to answer it. It's been answered on many other things. Amelia Earhart, of course, I've also answered. But uh, to answer your question, no, I don't think she discovered something. I just think her calculations were off because she was calculating it for a globe, and she ran out of gas. Simple. This one's called Flat Earth, Dear M. Sergeant. My name is Madi, and I've been watching your videos on enclosed Earth. I'm currently writing a paper about Flat Earth, Dome Earth, and Round Earth, and I would love to hear your views on the subject if you're okay with that. How did you find out about the Flat Earth theory, and what made you truly believe in it? Like I said, it completely and utterly up to you whether you answer my questions, and I will not be offended if you choose not to. Sincerely, Madi. Uh, many, uh, hopefully she's gone to my channel by now, but you know what, I should probably, you know what, she's, she's got to already know by now, this, this was uh, over a month ago, but yeah, I got in Flat Earth because I was looking through conspiracies, got bored, and just clicked on one, and regretted it ever since. This one's called Earth Flat. Hmm. Mark, when I was first told about this, I was like, what? He actually put a bunch of A's in there, what? And chuckled a little, but I decided to look up some info on it. <clears throat> I've always said your mind work best works like a parachute when it's open. So during the research, there is lots out there. Some kind of goofy until I reached your video. It has me really thinking, but I do have a question. I understand everyone being taught that it's round, but why hide it? What are they afraid of by what might happen? Or does it bring too many things into question, like our creator, etc.? There was another video that proved if the world was round, when things are out of sight, you shouldn't be able to see them. No matter if you use binoculars, telescope, because anything would be around the curve of the world. Just got me thinking a lot. Love to hear what you have to say. Thanks, Sam. Sam, hopefully you've, uh, what, the, that's all covered in the clues. So hopefully he you looked into Flat Earth Clues and gauging that he actually wrote to me, I think he did. So as far as why. Let's see, this one's called Flat Earth. Hi Mark, you may or may not answer this email as I can imagine you have had thousands sent to you regarding this subject. Yes, I have, but I'm going to answer it anyway. Firstly, I have seen Zeitgeist and I totally agree with your reasoning, especially 9-11. Anyone who disbelieves this are morons. However, the flat earth subject is something quite different. You mentioned Plane Finder. I already have this app as I find it fascinating. And yes, focusing on the South Atlantic after watching your YouTube post, I too have seen aircraft disappear when leaving South America. I am an engineer and work for a large military aircraft firm, BAA Systems, here in the UK. I'm keen to get in touch with our flight systems guy at our Wharton base to ask the question, why do aircraft disappear from GPS in the Southern Hemisphere? We have world-class designers and engineers working on the latest technology for military aircraft, so surely they will know. I have one question for you, though. If the Earth is flat, then why doesn't the sunlight light up the world constantly? Surely it would never go dark. Thanks for reading. Kind regards. Helen from the UK, I believe. And yeah, the sun going over the horizon again. Remember, the sun is very, very, very small. So if it was like a 50 mile wide cross object, it's a tiny light and it's probably a directional light. So as it's moving off into the distance and getting through, it just goes off into the distance. It doesn't go over the horizon. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it disappears. No different than a ship, no different than a train or the train tracks. 
It's 50 miles wide. Remember, that's tiny, tiny, tiny compared to the, uh, the, the whole horizon. This one's called Moon. Here's something interesting. Celestine quartz equals the moon. Oh, yeah, kind of cool. So it's kind of a, a, a spherical object made out of celestine quartz, and it does have sort of moonish gray coloring to it, a little bit. That's from a friend for the hill. His name's Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. This one's called Question. Mr. Sergeant, thank you for taking the time to put these videos together along with putting your information out there for those who have questions on your theories, views, clues, and explanations. If the earth is flat and all the information proposed is true, if we really do live in a dome, which I do not doubt, then why? what about alien life? Who said it was alien? Uh, NASA did. Disinformation. I'm not saying that there isn't things, there aren't things flying up there like the sun, or I'm sorry, like the moon and... Um, uh, Venus and Jupiter and Saturn I'm just saying that they aren't planets and there aren't people living on them and that's really it so the ships flying around probably part of older civilizations or are they part of other enclosed worlds looking forward to hearing back views I'm not, not the first asses no you're not all the best Mike Duran will I get an original question this week we'll see Mark oh, this one's called hear me out I hope you read this Mark something to think about if you are on a ship and you see nothing but water all around you know the ocean as far as the eye could see isn't that 3.4 ish miles in all directions so shouldn't the ball effect be ever so more pronounced and noticeable in that environment can we get a CGI replication of this phenomena with the curve at of 6.8 times 6.8 square mile center view. Am I making sense? Not so much, Joseph. Uh, try to reword that if you get a chance. I'd like to think about it, but it's still fairly early and I don't know, my brain's kind of fried. This one's called Effie. Hi, Mark. Thank you for all your videos. I don't think I have watched all of them, but I do appreciate them. If you have any more interesting links or info, I'm keen to hear more. Tom, and I don't know if Tom knows about the Flat Earth Clues, but you know what? I will put those in this folder and I will send them to him. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hi, Mark. I'm a new student at this important subject. My question is, do meteors really hit Earth? Uh, they might, but so what? I haven't found that answer yet. Maybe that isn't yet another lie we are programmed with. Thank you so much for your information. I am seeking the truth like you. Sincerely, Vicky. Uh, yeah, Vicky, when it comes to meteors, I think the really, really big ones just happened between civilizations because if they happened during the civilization, we probably wouldn't be conversing now. So that's the easy, you know, little, little terraforming. Sort of like decorating the moon with, with, with craters. You don't have to do it now. You could have done it you know, back in the day. So you don't need to have live meteors because if we look at the holes in the ground, we extrapolate and say, oh yeah, yeah, meteors. The illusion, you know, power perceived is power achieved. This one's called, please don't read my name on air. See, that's the way you're supposed to do it. If you don't want me to read your name on air, you open with it. Hi, Mark. I see that NASA has a new satellite that they had the cojones to name Sphere. Apparently, it will perform an all-sky spectral survey taking in the entire sphere light around the Earth. It is expected to provide NASA scientists with a better understanding of the birth and growth of our galaxy, as well as add to the ongoing search for life on other planets and stars. I smell a certain level of desperation. I also s suspect that we can expect grainy infrared images that are meant to disprove the flat Earth model. I found the article announcing this at the futurist.com website, Stay Flat, Brendan. And it's at futurism.com, a newly proposed space mission could unlock the mysteries of the universe. So check that out if you guys have a chance. This one's called Flat Earth Clues, an interview audio repository. Hi, Mark. Please read on Q&A. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think I will. I love listening to your FE interviews, but I am on the road a lot. Would you permit me to convert your interview videos to audio and host them on a website? I can even make them available on FTP Mirror. I just want to do something that will help get the word out that the earth is flat. I am a computer network analyst by day and geeky father of seven by night. Thanks for all you do. Hacking the planet. John Mad Dog Fox. And you bet you can take all my video or my audio and do whatever the hell you want with it. Anybody can. It's free. The truth should be free. Or as close to it as humanly possible. 
This one's called Eclipse Question from the Peanut Gallery. Mark, if the sun is self-eclipsing, how can it be explained that everyone does not see a full eclipse? Oh, hey, pretty sweet. You made my tag the thumbnail on the last Flat Earth tag compilation. Question mark. Uh, what? If it's sun's really, really small, then yeah, everybody's not going to see a full eclipse. If if the sun is self-eclipsing, why why would it you, why would it not be? I I'm kind of getting what you're saying there. I'm kind of getting, but but still not seeing what the problem is. I I wouldn't think any, everyone would. Remember, it's a tiny it's a tiny dot being covered by another tiny dot. But the, the world is still very, very big. So if it's a 50-mile object self-eclipsing, then not everyone's going to see it. But you know what? It's not a bad question. I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to I'm not gonna make fun of that question. What right do I have? This one's called, I had no desire to debunk the flat earth. Hello, Mark. I love your videos and interviews. I got terrible insomnia and wake up often during the night. Your voice has a perfect cadence and calming quality for getting my mind off the issues of the day and into something completely different. I put on sleep phones to keep the sound to myself so my husband can sleep. Oh, boy. And learn something new from you for a, f or a few of the other Flat Earth presenters on YouTube whose voices are not jarring. Brian Mullen is also great for this. You often say on your program that something like 99% of the people you know come to Flat Earth Belief through first trying to debunk the theory. Nope, not me. I was instinctively on board within the first five minutes of researching this while pursuing the internet for information on ancient cosmologies for a series of books I am writing that are based on the first few chapters of Genesis. My immediate instinctively positive response was probably partly due to the fact that I've never had any true interest in space like so many who come to Flat Earth kicking and screaming out of the heavy emotional investment in NASA and Mars and Star Wars stuff. Even as a child, I didn't believe the stars were as far away as they told us they are. It defies all logic to imagine the naked eye could see to the distances they suggest, even if light does travel. Dark, cold, chaotic, impersonal space. What's the attraction? Seriously. As a romantic, I see the flat earth as beautiful, purposeful, a jewel from God that somehow makes being human more fun instead of the weary weariness of viewing myself as one more speck of flesh rattling around on a ball of rock, hurtling through gloomy, ever-expanding darkness. As you said, Flat Earth is more elegant. There's order here, and a greater sense of accountability to the one who put us here. As a Christian, I thought, yes, this is the way that God I know would do things. Thanks for your great work, your balance, passion, your humility, and for not trashing religious people. You've got a real gift for broadcasting and interacting with people and make the subjects you explore understandable. May God bless you richly, Gene. And thank you, Gene, for putting me on your headphones at night and not telling your husband. It's kind of important. Always lie to the husband. They never see it coming. Just saying. This one's called a question. Mark, love your videos on YouTube. I have a comment I would love an answer. It's been bothering me for days. Imagine a children's roundabout in a park. Think about the outside of the roundabout. I think he's talking like a merry-go-round. Turning much faster than the spindle or axis of the roundabout. Now, if the Earth is spinning, the person at the equator would be moving at 1,000 miles an hour. But at the axis, the Earth uh, is one of the poles would seem move really slowly or it would be faster. No, 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 it would be slowly. In fact, you wouldn't even feel it at the top. You'd just be turning in a circle. Would a person notice the difference? How would these speeds of rotation at different points of the Earth affect water? Would a vortex form, would erosion originally been more severe at certain points of the Earth? You know, those are all great questions. Could the photos from space be of a circular atmosphere that's moving, leaving a stationary hidden flat Earth? Hmm. Thank you in advance. Peter Lee from UK, which is why he calls a merry-go-round a roundabout. Yeah, you're absolutely right. All those questions. Uh, in fact, my big one was when it came to the oceans, if it's uh, if the Earth is spinning a thousand miles at the equator, but zero miles an hour at the North Pole, why, I ha aren't, why isn't the uh, centrifugal force overriding gravity at least somewhat and bulging those o oceans, like, uh, oceans uh, like a spare tire around the equator? Why don't we have this huge surge, kind of like Saturn's rings? Uh, you know, Saturn's rings supposedly fly around Saturn, you know, with those thin, thin band of rock. Uh, why? But the gravity's holding in, but centrifugal force keeps them out there. So why? Why are the oceans you know, still, you know, uniformly l laid on top of this world with apparently not accounting for centrifugal force at all? Excellent question. 
This one's called Question Regarding Rockets and Flat Earth. Mark, after several months and exhaustive, uh, exhaustive research, I'm a flat earth convert. How could I be otherwise? The evidence, both scriptural and scientific, is too overwhelming to draw any other conclusion. But that doesn't mean I still don't have questions. Chief among these, if it's impossible to put anything into low earth orbit, why do countries spend so much money launching rockets, most purportedly with payloads, to orbit the earth? I've watched numerous YouTube videos exposing satellites and the ISS as frauds, but I've seen none that explain why. If low Earth orbit is impossible over the flat Earth, countries keep launching rockets anyway. Those with nuclear programs, I can understand. Ditto for NASA as cover for black projects, although that doesn't explain the space shuttle. If not into orbit, where did the shuttles go after each launch? If they landed somewhere on Earth for the duration of each mission, 135 over 20 years, surely someone somewhere would have witnessed this. It also doesn't explain why minor players with limited budgets, such as France, UK, and Japan, also have robust, robust rocket programs. I'm hoping you can help me understand. Is it impossible for countries to display satellites? Where are all those rockets for? The rockets for the illusion. They, once the first rockets were launched, every other rocket was just to, to help propagate the illusion. Uh, think of it this way. Without a rocket program, how do you even give anyone a fake picture of the Earth? The rocket programs are necessary for the appearance. Also, you can funnel money through it, a lot of money, if you wanted to uh, employ people. I mean, it's it's a good, busy work type of thing. I mean, a lot of people get, get paychecks and they build stuff, but they don't do anything. Uh, it's Unfortunately, it's the, it's the cost of keeping this place a secret. How much money would you spend to keep the people of the civilization in the dark regarding the nature of their home. There is no limit. Th think of the Antarctic Treaty, which is there's billions of dollars in resources down there, billions of dollars, and we're not gonna even touch it because it's problematic. It leads to loose ends that they don't wanna deal with. So that's why, I mean, it's, everyone does the rocket programs to keep appearances sake. So they don't know any different. It's not like every, you know, 99.99% of the people in those co corporations, they don't know what they're faking. Hopefully that helps. But if you want to follow up, just email me again and probably take me a while to, to get back to you, but I'll, I'll work on it. This one's called to the father of flat earth. Oh boy. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I don't know if you remember me, but I emailed you a few times a while ago. I've been laying low for a few months, just watching one globy become a flatty again and again. It's truly amazing. In one of your Eclipse radio shows, you mentioned, or the guest did, I don't remember, that it was observed that the sun looks like a rear projection screen. There were the screen, there were the screen is the sky, and the sun's light came through another realm or something to that effect. I would like you to expand on this. Let me see here. One of your Eclipse radio shows, you mentioned it was observed the sun looked like a rear projection screen. It's fascinating. You know, mainstream scientists not saying, oh yeah, sure. Okay. So is, you know, is it possible the sun is actually a projection, you know, a light source being bounced off of a reflective surface? Sure. Why not? I mean, what if, uh, what if the sun's, uh, the sun that we know is actually the point of light created by a giant magnifying glass and the real light is outside of it? Or is the sun electric? Uh, is the sun uh, a transformer for an energy source that's being interdimensionally piped in? We don't know. The technology used up there is way beyond us. So they could be using things that we don't know. Remember, how do we explain the stuff that we have now? How do you go back a um, hundred years and take something, you know, something simple from our, our world right now, like a microwave oven? How do you explain a microwave oven to somebody a hundred years ago or a jet airliner to somebody 200 years ago or even a hundred years ago when they just had, you know, basically paper airplanes flying around? Uh, how do you explain any of this tech to people? It, it, there's some things that are just beyond us. You know, right now, if we can imagine it, we can do it. If we can imagine it. But I, some of these things are beyond our current imagination. That's all I'm saying. This one is called Flat Earth Traverse City, Michigan. Mark, I have taken your advice and posted a short video on YouTube asking for like-minded flat earthers in and around Traverse City to send an email my way in hopes of scheduling a meetup in northern lower Michigan at some point in the not too distant future. If you'd be so kind to give a shout on air, I'd be very thankful to you. YouTube and Flat Earth Traverse City, Michigan. You can email him at buds441bruce at yahoo.com. That's buds41bruce at yahoo.com. 
And all you have to do is put Flat Earth in the subject line. Thanks a million, Bruce. And I'm sorry for the delay on that one, Bruce. A lot of these emails, I just take a quick glance over to make sure they're not solicitations and that I put them in the must-read pile. And hopefully you've done the meetup since then. But if not, I will be happy to make a promo for you. This one's called It's So Simple. Mark, anyone, even a child, can build a model of a flat earth with water on it. Not one, not even a scientist, can build a model of the globe earth with water on it. From Constance. You're absolutely right, Constance. Has not been done. Wow, we actually make it, make it to September emails. May, may happen this show. This one's called Thank You. Mark, I watched your documentary and loved it. Well done. I was turned on to the Flat Earth about a month ago. I'm a Christian and have been most of my life. Since eight years old, I am 54. I watched Rob Skiba and the truth spoke to me. I went right to my Christian family and they did not see it. He is the young, crazy son. Over the last weeks, I have had an uncontrollable urge to tell everyone I encounter. Oh boy. I know with my heart that this is true. Jesus said, I am the truth and the life. The world is being run by the devil. The mortgage was passed to him in the garden when man fell. My mother told when I was a child that as Christians we live in the world but try not to take part in the world. I did not know what she meant. Now I do. I want to spread the word about this. I believe the truth will come out. I feel NASA, who lies, will come out soon and say we have made contact with aliens. If you know the Bible, it is as is it was in the days of Noah. There were Nephilim on the earth in those days. They are fallen angels, and they are with us today. That is what people are seeing in the sky. If you need any foot soldiers in the quest to bring out the truth, please feel free to contact me. Thank you again. God bless you, and please be safe. The world will do anything to keep this from coming out. Adios. P.S. If there's any conferences or gathering for Flat Earth, please feel free to email me. And you know what? And I'm just going to email him right now. Hopefully he knows this by now. I'll say thanks. The... FE Conference FE2017.com and I will send him the link. Sorry, I'm doing this for you guys right now. HTTP colon slash and there. Sent it to him. Hopefully he'll get a ticket. There's a few tickets left. We just opened up a few more, and if those sell out, which they probably will, you're going to have to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net, and I will definitely see if I can get you a ticket uh, through other people. So there's other people selling tickets for like 100, 130 bucks a pop, and that's pretty close to base price. I, I haven't seen anyone close, sell them on eBay, you know, eBay or, or trying to scalp them or anything. This one's called Me Again Bud. Mark, I legit wanted to open with a joke just now, but I don't know any Flat Earth jokes. So I Googled it, and all they came up with is Flat Earth a joke. So I would like to, via you, Mr. Mark Sargent, father of Flat Earth, put out a challenge, finish this sentence. A Flat Earther walks into a bar. <laughs> oh, okay. So who can who can we, um, uh, yeah, come up with good Flat Earth jokes. If, if there is one, I don't know. I don't know any Flat Earth jokes right now. I know uh, a really bad chemistry joke, uh, which is um, uh, hydrogen and oxygen walk into a bar to, to get a drink. That's not the joke because you think, oh, okay, hydrogen and oxygen, that's water. No, that's not the joke. The joke is uh, the gold then walks into the bar. And they look and they go, hey, you, get out of here. You can see the periodic table for gold is AU. Anyway. He also says, enjoy being free. Knowing the truth is the most liberating feeling. We are special. We effing matter. I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. <laughs> That's from the movie The Network. Don't hold back. The best way to tell people something important is through comedy. George Carlin, for example, nailed that. Hashtag flat earth. Ha. H-A. Much love, brah. Bobby. <laughs> One of the more entertaining emails I get. This one's called Ivan from Croatia. Hi, Mark. I'm flat earther about one year now, and I believe they are laying us for decades, and I want to know why, but I don't know. What should we flat earth believers should do? Okay, remember, this is not English, not perfect English. Do you have any suggestions? I, for example, would go to and around Antarctica and beyond if it is possible, but I don't have the money. 
I was with my friends and told them that Earth is flat and not spinning around Sun. You know, every time somebody says like, you know, when they leave out stuff like spinning around, spinning around Sun. So when I told them I was attacking like you have pictures, gravity. But what could, what hurt me the most? He actually spelled it M-O-U-S-T. Oh, I'm totally reading the rest like this. It was they laugh at me. Only one friend when I asked why no one traveled the earth from north to south. They told it's cold and other BS. But the friend said, yeah, that's interesting. On job, on the break. Oh, and he spelled break, B-R-A-K-E. I love it. Uh, we were talking. I told again, earth is flat. And result was 20% was, hmm, he's maybe right. 80% was, I don't care. I'm open-minded and I hope to be for the rest of my life. I want, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna thank you for the videos on YouTube. They are eye-opener. Keep on the good work. He actually said on. There are flat earthers more and more day by day in known world. P.S. Sorry for bed spelling. I'm fluent in talk, not so in writing. Best regards, Ivaka Simic from Zagreb, Croatia. And I got <laughs> In the P.S. He act actually wrote bed spelling B E D and um, writing first time I've ever seen this W R I G H T I N G. Oh my God, that's such a great email. Awesome, thank you, Iva I I Ivica, I V I C A, from Zagreb. <laughs> that's great. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more. Uh, this one's Polaris. Mark, hello, my name is Joshua. I'm a fellow flat earther. I watch your videos all the time and really appreciate your work. I'm sorry, appreciate your work. My eyes have been completely opened. The, the truth. Actually, the, the. So I get involved with trying to spread that truth on social media and other places. Right now, I'm debating a hardcore globe earther. I believe his background is in astrophysics. Although I feel I had the upper hand. Now there is one question he can't get off. His question is this, if the Earth was flat, why does Polaris get lower over the horizon until it is totally gone in the Southern Hemisphere? My answer is the law of perspective is anything or elevated object gets lower and lower in the horizon until it is gone entirely. Well, this is not a good enough answer for me. Could you please help me? Why does Polaris get lower and lower in the horizon unless it's totally, it's totally gone? Oh, two projection systems. Sorry, I know other people disagree on this. Look, if, if, if the, if the planetarium, the terrarium, is large enough you can do uh, multiple projection systems or just instance the whole thing meaning you use instancing and we've been to look up that if you get a chance uh, realization of an object and it's in development um, we've been able to do this for at least the last 15 years you we, we can instance just about anything now based on geographic regions so I'm looking up the stars and you're looking up the stars in another part of the sky. I mean, technically, you only have to be 100 yards from me. And we could instance it to where I see a completely different set of stars and they do completely different things from you based on geography. So not hard. I know we try to do it in terms of stuff that we would build in, in real life. But I can tell you in, in the digital world, in the simulation world, we can do that. In fact, we, from a projection side, we could also do it. We could, if a planetarium was big enough, that's what you would do. You'd have to use multiple projection systems. Sorry, just saying. Uh, can we do one more? Let's see. This one's from, it's called Your U YouTube Video. Hi, Mark. I loved your video under the dome and thought it spelled out everything very well. I know you covered airline pilots and whether or not they had knowledge of the flat earth, but I still am curious. As you know, there have been several videos discussing odd flight paths and pilots who have to take and when an emergency rose on a flight and they supposedly had to get to the nearest airport. One example was a flight heading, I believe, from Southeast Asia to San Francisco and a few hours into the flight, the emergency came up to the plane, took the more northern route to Alaska instead. But surely that pilot knew that Alaska has that Alaska had the closest airport and why? Because on a flat earth map, Alaska was the closest airport. Also, how about the air traffic controllers who had to confirm the change in the flight plan for that flight? Surely they also knew or also why would they not question why the plane would be directed to Alaska? Thanks again for your wonderful video, Jeff. Uh, maybe we'll end on this one, maybe. Which is, no, wait, and again, okay, first off, it was from the uh, Southeast Asia, but it was to Los Angeles. The question comes into play as when exactly in that route, because if you're going from Southeast Asia to uh, Los Angeles, you're going to be going really, really close to Hawaii. However, if you divert early enough, you could get away with going to Alaska and the pilots aren't going to even question it. 
But yeah, you're absolutely right. They should be diverting to Hawaii, or at least at least landing in Hawaii if that wasn't going to be their first connection to begin with. Did the pilots know? Probably not. But even if they did, who are they going to tell? Who are you going to go to? I mean, we just had a pilot come out from the Netherlands about what she th- how what she thinks the routes are, and it took her a lot, and she's been grounded. Since then, she's not flying anymore. So you're willing to risk your career just because you diverted to a city that didn't make sense? Divert to Anchorage instead of Honolulu? You going to risk your career? Doubt it. Let's see if we can get a positive one to end, end on real quick. Uh, uh, let's see here. Just no great little bad. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Sorry. Okay, let's do this one real quick. We'll, and we'll do one more. Here we go. It's called uh, Under the Dome Video Question. Hi, Mark. I wrote an email yesterday. And my wife asked me a question. She wants to know how aliens got here, if there actually is a dome over the earth. Yes, there is. Aliens aren't aliens. Good question. And the only answer I could think of was that aliens being millions of years ahead of us know how to get through. Any thoughts? Well, yeah, sure. Maybe. That's one of the big questions, which is the things that are flying up there. And you can look with night vision binoculars anytime you want. You'll see them. Are they in here with us? Are they trapped in here with us or can they leave at will? I don't know. It's a question for another time, I think, because we're out of time. And that's the end of Q&A for this time around. If you guys want your questions answered, you can email me directly at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Thank you for everybody who has written me so far. I know I got a pile of emails to get through and I will keep trying. I'll keep trying until one day I just drop dead. Until next time, guys. Stay flat.